Hey Jake here. We're at one of our apartment communities here in Knoxville, and we're with Fancy John, and we got we got the D Dog here. You never know what you're gonna find going into apartments, so we just got this apartment back. Let's see how they left it, and we'll talk about it a little bit. The the hand stuff. Oh, dude, you should use this for the. Uh... What's the story here? We got we got a sofa here. We got the the poker table. What the, is this typical, or what do we do with this stuff? Well, actually, the apartment looks like it's in really good shape. When tenants actually put their notice to move out. We tell them that they have to take everything with them. We also make sure that they don't leave anything behind, like trash or large items. So this gets charged back to them when they move out. So we have some what looks like really nice items. We'll probably either donate Couch them or get shape. rid of them. The couch is in beautiful shape. It's really nice. But this isn't usually what happens. Normally they'll leave some that's torn down or broken and there's yeah, trash and garbage everywhere. But we do ch we charge that back. Otherwise, the apartment itself came back in really good shape. But we're gonna we're gonna have to hold this for what thirty days on something like this. If someone were to abandon the apartment, yeah. we would have to hold it for thirty days yeah. for it to get rid of. But when someone gives notice to move out yeah. and everything's not here when they give the key yeah. or whatever's here when they give the keys back, that's ours or garbage. Okay. And how? Yes. What's, what do we got going on in here? It looks a little little unsettled. Like messy floor. Yep. So we yeah, have some dirty floor. floor. We have it looks some, like we have some every. We got the local. Oh, I don't want to be touching that stuff. No, oh, man. What they is that? pulled up the drip pans, which doesn't <laughs> make sense because they weren't dirty, and they left some chairs. Overall, doesn't look worn or beat. We're probably going to end up having to replace a window because of a crack. We're probably going to replace this floor because this is dated from what we normally have. Did they leave us any, uh, any snacks in the fridge? Nope. We got a little rust on the top of the fridge there, though. The best rust. part about the fridge, though, is when they don't leave snacks, they leave it off, and you open it up, and it just oh, stinks. Man. They That's left. They left their moving gift bucket. Correct. So this we can tank, reuse that one. Just from what I know, this one actually only lived here part time, so he really just used this apartment as an address. So and the fact place, that stuff is like poker poker and poker, yeah. absolutely. But like I said, the apartment looks really good, and it isn't uncommon for people to leave things behind. We just make sure that we address it up front when they are telling us that they're going to move out. Yeah. It gets tricky when we don't know that someone's moving out, when we have to get keys remade or drill out a lock. But we're gonna do little changes like this fan. Maybe some hardware on the doors. This might have to go to the office. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good change. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we have there. Yeah, that's so nice. nice. <laughs> that's pretty much it. We have our white plates on here. So this tur this apartment has been turned partially by us already. Yeah. So it's going to be a little bit easier too. What's the craziest thing that you've seen in an apartment turn when you walk in? Oh, so we had one where there was an individual that was living there. And when they moved out, we found that they had animals that lived inside with them. They were never taken outside. There was a hoarder situation where there were bottles of... So the, ba the bathroom is, is pretty much in the apartment. There's the no bathroom for the animals. Yeah. The actual bathroom for the tenant, pristine. Beautiful. But sure. there was... Uh, bottles of sodas and all the food that they would eat just thrown next to the bed like they would get up Go to work come home eat in the bed and just throw things to the side oh, and all, like we had to replace all of the flooring and Every time that we moved an item there would be scattered cockroaches everywhere oh. Because there had never been any cleaning done in it, but it was borderline hazmat and it was it was a rough spot Just another damn job and yep, we got it cleaned and we got it rented in just a couple weeks, but it was a lot of work that's crazy. How much yeah. did that cost you? To get it done? Yeah. Because we do a lot of our labor in-house, it was really just man hours. We ended yeah. up renting a, a six-yard garbage uh, dumpster and getting everything out of the apartment. Nothing was savable. So once we got to that point, we just ripped out the floors, we ripped out everything, and it was just a group effort for two days on that. So man hours for two days for four people, a dumpster, and then the supplies to get it back in. About $1.74 per square foot of flooring and then anything that we had to change that we couldn't keep in the kitchen, like appliances. Wow. But that, it's the man hours that cost you, right? Because that's four people's time and attention going in and, and taking time away from that you could be spending somewhere else. You right? would think so that the man hours cost you, but the man hours save you because it would cost us more to actually to get a company out there to get right, it. Right, right, right. So as long as we can manage the actual time and as long as we get all of our work orders done outside of that, then the man hours actually save us money. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Sounds like Fancy's talk a little vertical integration. Keep it, keep it in house. Keeping it in house. It does right? work. That's what we're all about. Absolutely. So we got trash out back here. So this one right now, it's basically on 
the verge of being rented. We have a tenant that's due to move in today. This is literally the cleaning ladies stuff. So it's getting a final polish before it's like a, it smells like a lot of Lysol. It's good. Lemon, lemony freshness. Regardless of what the, the cleaning smell is, we actually ask people to use scented instead of unscented. People like that smell when you oh, walk yeah, into an apartment. Like a, it's like a new car, right? That's exactly it's a new right. Apartment smell. There's a reason they make that new car smell hanger, because yeah. people love it. Exactly. So quick, quick touches. We have white here. Yes, sir. Our switches. Okay. We got white here. Worldly gray. Yes, sir. Right? We got updated light fixture. Right, brushed nickel wood. Yep, this is probably the third turn at least on this floor, but we have vinyl throughout. Yes, sir. We have a little vinyl. Uh, and then, and as we come over here, we got the white on white. This is a buy and hold property, so we don't have, we're not going high end here. We have existing white. We have painted these cabinets white. We have new poles on them. But, John, you want to talk about this? Is this existing or is this, is this updated here? So this right here is We're what we do. Countertop. Whenever we find a countertop that has burn marks on it or yeah. chips that are just egregious, we have a relatively inexpensive, instead of replacing them, we actually get them sprayed. It's called resurfacing. We yeah. can get them in different sheens, different colors. So if you have a different layout, then you can actually put them, you know, more brown in it or more black yeah. speckles. But, um, so when you also, say sprayed, how, how do they do that? They literally tie everything off with duct tape and plastic, and then when they go over it, they have a like a car prick, uh, spray bottle, right. and they just spray the whole thing, take care of it, then it sits and it dries, and then they hit on top of it another coat. So that's actually gonna prevent this from having burn marks moving forward. It's actually protective as well. So really? it, it makes it so that so these the are gonna last color, longer. So the first color, the first just want like a white finish, and then after that they'll put the, uh, the second coat. We'll it's a combination. It. The second coat has the speckles, and what actually cures or adds the extra protection on top. So the base coat, I believe that this is gray right. underneath, and then they come through and the second coat has all the additionals on it. But it, it allows us to not take the, the time to actually have to replace cabinet tops. Sometimes right. they don't fit well, you gotta cut more. And we also have the ability of having these last much longer because we haven't had to, since we've started this process, replace any counters that have had this done to them. So you get a, essentially a brand new countertop, you don't rip it out. How much did this cost you? This was 225 and it includes a bathroom as well. So we get matching kitchen and bathroom vanities. That's why we call them Fancy John. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's fancy with that. that people really do like that. Like the flooring matching in yeah. the kitchen and the bathroom. They love yeah. it when the counters match in the kitchen and the bathroom as well. Awesome. So, and, and again, here we have light like updates. We got we got fancy mat, uh, fancy matching John, and we got a we got a new uh, mirror in here. So, light yeah. updates matching here on the hardware. So this probably came without a frame on it. The mirror, most of the time. No, this is a, this is a mirrored frame, right, John? Correct. Well, I'm saying that the, the the mirrors usually a lot of times we go into these older apartments, right? They don't have the frame on. Right, them. right. They're it's just glued onto the wall. What we replaced on there was an old medicine cabinet. Yeah. Oftentimes rusted, sometimes with the paint that doesn't match and things like that. Yeah. But that mirror serves the same purpose because we have a, a lot of countertop space on that one. Sure. And it actually makes the apartment look better. It really does. Absolutely. Modern affordability through uniformity. That's right. Chick-fil-A of apartments, folks. <laughs> As you know, there's probably a shutoff buried over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's what we get. Right. So is it puddling because of the shutoff, or oh, is it just puddling right now? Right, right. Exactly. Um, if that's not dry by like Monday, and I don't think we're gonna have any rain by then, yeah. then definitely we gotta start digging. No doubt. So when we took over this property, there was a separate parcel of land that you can see over here, and they had a, a kind of uh, untamed volleyball court. People used it, but it wasn't in the best of shape. They wanted over $100,000 for this land. We're not building on it. It really served no use for us. So essentially, we got our lawn care bills reduced, and now this is uh, something that went to auction and sold off. We lost the volleyball court, but we saved on mowing costs, and we saved ourselves $100,000 at so close. So there were separate parcels uh, right Correct. away when you were looking at it? Correct. Got it. But they wanted, they wanted to tie it all into the sale, so it helped us reduce our costs ongoing and then up front as well. Tough spot to sell too, right? Because it's, it's not even level right across the board. And you're right next to an apartment complex. Yeah, like, yeah. it's going to be tough to build on that. So we just went through an apartment, we talked about the countertop resurfacing, and we really try to do as much of this stuff in-house as we can. So if we, if we can do countertop resurfacing, there's a chance we might do it. Typically we sub out flooring, we sub out paint, we attempted to do this in-house, and this is what we got. 
Wasn't our, wasn't our best uh, foot forward. It looks like something that may be in an institution, just not very warm, not very fuzzy feeling. So essentially we learned our lesson on this one. And now John, we're having to come back and, uh, and basically sub it out, correct? Absolutely. So this particular apartment was only leased out three months and it looks, I don't know if it conveys well on camera, but it looks like it's been used for more than a couple of years. Yeah. You can see chips, you can see when we tried to make like the angle here look flush that it didn't work out very well. So we learned that it doesn't pay for us to do this. It only costs not even a hundred dollars. It costs less than a hundred dollars more to get it done professionally, and it'll last basically like we talked about the last one for an undetermined amount, a very long time. But also look a thousand times better. Here's another uh, another example of like something that we do. To make the uh, to make it work out better, right? So this right here is a drain line. We had an issue where this thing would overflow and leak into an apartment, consistently causing like uh, water damage on the carpet and things like that. So we had to figure out what we were going to do. So in house, we got that little box set up to go out and have a drain line come out so that we can actually avoid the the problem from happening again. But the solution that a plumber had given us was going through the concrete, coming up and busting out the walls and getting it put up, and that was probably an $800 difference from us doing it to them doing it. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice little shelf too, right? You can, you can actually put stuff on there. Collect stuff, That's where your G.I. Joe's go. All day. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> All your G.I. Joe's. That is nice. But the, um, the bathroom over here has what we were trying to do before with the vanity where, remember how I said that it had more vanity space, so it made sense to put the mirror in. Right. On this one, we were actually at one point replacing the vanities because we thought that it was adding a nice little touch to them. So you have some space here to do extra, but we found out that it doesn't allow you because there's no medicine cabinet to keep your stuff anywhere except for underneath the vanity. So it looks nice and it looks sharp, but it's aesthetic only, it's not in function. Sounds like you believe that renting is personal and your residence are your number one priority. You're absolutely right about that. Alrighty, Uncle Sean, one of the things that we look for is the apartment home. That can mean a lot of things. One to me is we like washer dryer hookups. Mm -hmm. The second is second floor space. As you can see, we have a nice loft. Some people refer to these as townhomes. You have upstairs and downstairs living, and people absolutely love that. So on the buy side of the equation, when you're buying right, we do really look for this because we know that people are going to want to stay here, they want to stay here longer versus the garden style. John, how often do you think, or excuse me, how easy is it to rent a townhome versus a garden style apartment? So if I had a loft available and a garden style available, unless we're talking about a handicap situation, right. the loft always goes first. And I would say that if we had to put a number on it, it would probably be three to one how many lofts I can go with. And the, the, the people that created this property thought about that. It's 60% loft style one bedroom apartments. And it's a good, it's a good reason. What's, what's some of the feedback that you get when people are in the lofts versus a garden when you're showing them side by side? So a couple of different things. They love to have a place to entertain that's away from their, their bedrooms. Mm -hmm. they, have, they like the character is a thing that I hear a lot because cookie cutter can get you into a situation where you have two bedrooms on the left, you have a kitchen and a living room and everyone's seen the same thing. Yeah. But if you see something a little bit different, it catches your eye and you're more likely to remember it. So I, I hear people coming back and saying, I remember the loft, that's why I came. So just a little difference makes a big play for us when we're talking about keeping it filled. And you probably get premium rent price in a loft versus a garden sale. Is that fair to say? Absolutely fair to say. Very cool.